There has been another spate of false DMCA filings on YouTube. I would like to pitch a couple of ideas that could ameliorate the situation. First though, I want to explain how the Digital Millennium Copyright Act or DMCA works, or rather doesn't work in this case by looking at the safe harbour provision. It is important because it explains why some of the proposals that have been made so far wouldn't work and also why this is targeting the right part of the equation. There are three parties in a DMCA filing. YouTube or the online service provider, the person who uploaded the video and the person who files the DMCA notice claiming that they have copyright over the video. When YouTube receives a notification they take down the video and email the person who uploaded it to tell them. The uploader can file a counter notification to try to have the video reinstated which is sometimes successful. The question often asked is why YouTube takes down the video and reinstates after investigation which is seemingly reversal of the innocent until proven guilty principle that we value so highly. The answer is the safe harbour provision which can be found as DMCA Title II, the Online Copyright Infringement Liability Limitation Act. If YouTube is hosting copyrighted content without the copyright holder's permission, the DMCA offers them a safe harbour and protection from legal action if they promptly remove it once they've been told about it. The second part of the safe harbour provision is that if a counter notice is filed and it turns out that the original DMCA claim was unwarranted, the person whose video was unfairly removed cannot take action against YouTube or the online service provider either. The effect is that there is always going to be less legal exposure in removing the video than keeping it up. Unless and until the DMCA amended, this is not going to change. For this reason, I do not feel that asking YouTube to investigate before removing or beef up its procedures is going to be taken on board. They would be exposing themselves to legal action and raising their costs. I want to make it clear that this isn't YouTube's fault. They didn't write the law. What we need is a solution that doesn't go for YouTube but the third leg in the stool the person filing the DMCA claim. As part of filing a DMCA claim you have to make a statement to the effect of I swear under penalty of perjury that the information in the notification is accurate and that I am the copyright owner or am authorized to act on behalf of the owner of an exclusive right that is allegedly infringed. This is meant to allow recourse against someone who files a false DMCA the problem on YouTube is that anyone can set up an anonymous account and use that to file the DMCA with any name they want. There is nothing stopping me filing a DMCA against the Vatican's channel with the name Joseph Ratzinger. I propose that YouTube take a leaf out of Twitter's book. Certain Twitterers have verified accounts. Twitter has checked out they are who they say they are. Now, it would not be possible for YouTube to check out everyone who uses YouTube manually in the way Twitter do, but they could, for instance, require credit card verification. That way you could connect a DMCA filing with a person. I add two caveats. I am not suggesting that every YouTube account should have to be verified. Just people who want to file DMCA claims online using their YouTube account. Nor do I think this should be the only way of filing a DMCA claim. You should still be able to do it the old-fashioned way with pen, paper and a stamp. This method would reduce the number of false DMCA's in three ways. Firstly, it would add a step to the process, reducing drive-by DMCA's by griefers. Secondly, it would allow YouTube to identify people who repeatedly file false DMCA's. Thirdly, and most importantly, 
he would attach the name of a person to the action, increasing the likelihood of successful legal action and making them, hopefully, reconsider filing a false DMCA. An additional disincentive to contesting a false DMCA claim is that it gives the con content producer's name and address to the person filing the DMCA. The content producer has to give their real details as YouTube may otherwise suspend or terminate their account. As I described before, the same does not effectively apply to the person making the claim. A false DMCA claim is thus a low risk to means to obtaining someone's name and address. The DMCA does provide for appointing an agent, but this either involves hiring a lawyer or passing the risk on to someone else. Neither is particularly acceptable. I believe it was a user Rosebush who suggested giving shared ownership of a falsely DMCA video to a third party who is willing to have risk having their docs dropped. I believe a better solution would be to establish a company for this purpose. A company could draw up a standard contract for transferring ownership, including ownership automatically reverting to the person who made the video, and so on. By establishing a company, liability could be limited and a single registered address is all that is needed. It could build up a knowledge base of how to fight DMCA claims and gather statistics on what kind of false claims are being filed. I would also hope that the presence of such an organization would help to reduce false claims. I believe these ideas have some merit and I would very much appreciate any feedback, comments or criticism.